you know, I started doing all this research in virtual reality and trying to figure out how to create these immersive experiences in which you could be transported into these other spaces and you know, having to put on these goggles and head-mounted displays and we needed more and more resolution and if we had that then we could replicate the world. I, what I found was that it was very cold and also very lonely. In my work I see that same desire to create these experiences but really to, to do it for a group of people. I think that certainly has come through here in this piece for the National Gallery and that people really are in there and they are going on a journey. Even though we did a you know very uh, elaborate rendering and a simulation to show what the piece would look like, even that didn't come close to capturing the, the way that the space looks. One of the most exciting things about it is the way that it, it wraps around the audience. It's not a rectangle, um, it's, it's immersive and that there's a ceiling and it curves around and, and it, it, it envelops you. Those are the things that I look for, these you know, unexpected elements and kind of learning from the space and from the, the grid of lights and from the, the, the parameters and variables that I have to work with. That teaches me what the piece is going to be. In programming the piece, we worked, you know, late at night after hours, and uh, so it was just me and the light. When I began working with light, I was suspicious of, of too much. Uh, I really wanted to limit that and was concerned with keeping it pared down. It's been a real evolution for me to, to scale up to 41,000 points of light. We really didn't want to alter the space at all, and we, and we didn't, and we, we left everything as it was, but added a layer. And I really do like thinking of it as this ephemeral layer that's put on top. When I say ephemeral, I mean um, fleeting, almost like vapor or, you know, like a cloud or almost like floating, like it's, it's, it's a point in space. Now that the installation's been up and running for several months, it's, it's interesting to come back and see it again. Just come into the gallery and sit in the cafe and, and observe it and observe people with the piece. And that really was the missing component. Suddenly with people in it and people responding and silhouettes and um, there's so many different places to be because the space, the scale of the space, you know, some people are close, some people are far. And, Seeing people's reactions really through this, uh, you know, through the internet, through Flickr and through YouTube and through all these means that people have of sharing their images and their videos and commenting on it. And it's nice to be able to make such a public work of art and to have such a tremendous audience and to really see what they're seeing in a way. I love making pieces that anyone can connect to, but there is something bigger happening which is very exciting. And, and seeing people's responses, just overhearing their conversations. You know, I've heard little children ask their parents, you know, is this a movie? Um, and, and trying to kind of categorize it. Having a team really helped a lot and this feeling that like everyone's working together and we'll sit here and, you know, help me until, you know, two or three in the morning with the, you know, ethernet switches that weren't working or whatever situation we had. I felt like people really extended themselves and uh, from beginning to end, the it took us about three years to complete the project and I think for, for many artists that, that really wouldn't be doable. kind of got it so right and it really works so well <laughs> that I really hope that 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 will be the case in the future and uh, somehow we just through all the you know the combination of, of elements and somehow we just it just it just was really kind of perfect and uh, I think that's a we set a high bar so I'm 
that's my challenge, though. So.